Hey folks, this is Vagrant. Welcome back to the Thaumaturge. In the last video, we got arrested. Hello. <laughs> we got arrested, taken to the Citadel, which is where they specifically interview and torture revolutionaries. We also have a new thing, which we're going to read. And it all kicked off with Rasputin. It was kind of a crazy episode. A lot happened. Uh, we're definitely in the end game of the main story now. The Citadel, officially the headquarters of the military and a symbol of the might of the Russian Empire. Unofficially, a place of torture, agony and death for all that who dare to look up from under the boot. The cells run deep into the bowels of the earth, the endless corridors smeared with the blood of the convicts, and the officers hide secrets and sentences to make anyone's hair stand on end. A kingdom of sorrow and despair that is not kind to anyone. Bum, bum, ba -dum. <clears throat> what have we got here? The Morning Gazette. Right, it's in front of the St. Mary Magdalene Orthodox Church. Yesterday was a highly turbulent day for Praga residents. The events in front of the St. Mary Magdalene Orthodox Church unfolded as follows. According to witnesses, everything started with an exorcism being performed inside the church. The ritual wouldn't have ended happily if not for Grigory Rasputin, who was there to cure the possessed boy. He then delivered a fiery sermon that provoked the troublemakers present in the church to start a brawl. Shots were fired. The crowd went at each other's throats and a scuffle broke out, which then moved outside the church walls in a last spurt of decency. The police were called and local patrols also arrived on the scene. The brawl lasted half an hour. A few of the most aggressive ringleaders were arrested, while the rest managed to escape during the confusion. That's not quite how I would describe what happened. But hey ho. You know, I feel like I'm doing it because I don't want to miss anything, but I feel like <laughs> in this limited time we have to explore, I shouldn't be... Um, <laughs> well, exploring basically, like, logically, it doesn't make any sense to explore like this. Skalon's biography. Georgi Antonovich Skalon was born on October 24th, 1847 in Petersburg. From early childhood, the pearl of the Russian Empire opened his heart to the beauty of Russian culture and an upbringing in a respectable, patriotic family provided him with the best possible chance of development. Thus, the son of Anton Anton Antonovich, Anton Antonovich, really, and Yulia Yulva, Yulva <laughs> Yagorovna has always been destined for greatness. An only child with exceptional intellectual abilities and a pure, kind heart, he gained the respect of the people around him from a very early childhood when... Dot, dot, dot. I felt something. Where is it? It's here, Victor. Stanislav's file. Stanislav Shulsky. Divorce from Nadia Mikhailovna <laughs> Case file. Case of the death of the loan shark Ivan... Karokin, witness testimonies, list of material evidence, autopsy report, relationship with the Russian aristocrat, Svetlana. My math doesn't work. It's too early in the video for talking. Svetlana Rumyantseva, reported by a collaborator codenamed Pleasant. Copies of correspondence with Nadia Sulska, Shulska from the years 1899 to 1904. Testimonies of notaries public and their chartered accountants regarding the business activity at La Shkochana Street. Reports by district officers, the caretaker of the tenement house at 13 Novogrodsko Street, and spies regarding the suspicious gatherings. Wait, what? Reports by district officers, officers, the caretaker of the tenement house at 13. Grzynska? No. <laughs> Copies of Viktor Shulsky's correspondence from the years 1895 to 1904. Forest Falk, knew everything about him. Thoughts hovering over the file arrange themselves in neat rows like well-trained soldiers. One can feel the joy. The goal has been achieved. Another man put on a leash, bound by indestructible bonds of information. He will not slip away. He will obey. He will do as he's told. Maybe that's why Konechkin and my dad were friends, inverted commas. Because he, it's just because he had dirt on him, basically. Samira's file. Sarah Rivkin, copy of birth certificate. Kingdom of Galicia and Lodomeria. Death certificates for Jacob and Maria. Oh no, they're her children, maybe? Victim testimonies, material evidence of fraud, reports by collaborators. So, yeah. Samira's file, or rather Sarah's. If these documents were to see the light of day, there would be no place for Samira in Warsaw. A thought settled on the file, pleased with itself like a fat cat. It's satisfied with getting another officer. Not a willing cooperator, perhaps, but let's be honest, so much the better. He's just racking up collaborators by farming dirt on them, basically. He's not a nice dude. Shockingly enough. <laughs> Teacup is made of thin porcelain. There's an imprint of red lipstick on its rim. 
An afterthought has attached itself to the lipstick. It's full of panic and fear, like a bird whose head someone is about to twist. This is the end of freedom and independence. You're trapped. The man sitting in front of you has you in his grasp and will not let you go. So I wonder if this is why she was at the party then. To get the, um... Yeah, I mean, that party was full of Polish collaborators, right? So she's there to get information. Samira didn't volunteer to work with Knieszkin. The chief forced her to cooperate and very much enjoyed his control over the fate of the Thaumaturge. I should take these with me. I will indeed. Ligia's file. Ligia Shulska. Testimonies of notaries public and their chartered accountants. Copies of correspondence. Reports by collaborators. There's a t note on top that reads, At the chief's special request. A lump of fear constricts the throat and irritation obscures reason. A marriage of convenience will only happen if it's Ligia's only option. She cannot be given any support. Her loved ones must be eliminated, especially her brother. Everyone wants to marry Ligia. <laughs> so he's trying to do it by getting rid of her entire family. That's my book. Oh, is that the black room? What do you think of this, father? Start to read heart one. Let's see. Should I just casually have a little read? That seems like a terrible idea. Shulsky, there's no time for reading. I can't read this. It's like describing colors to a blind man. I don't get it. Whatever you're mumbling, I don't care. We need to go. What happened? The guard peeked inside this cell and everything fell apart. Konyetkin was furious. It'll take him a little while before he regains his composure, so let's not waste time. I'll lead us out of the gate, but what then? My cellmates have confirmed their people are observing the Citadel. They'll pick us up. Sounds like a plan. I'm gonna get Janaka out of here. And I saw your files. Sarah Rivkin, right? I saw your files. You like playing with fire. I haven't been here for a long time. Did you hear what I said about escaping? <laughs> it's not the angle I would have taken, admittedly. <laughs> you like playing with fire. I was more looking for sympathy, perhaps, you know? Before we leave, I'd like to grab one of my cellmates. What? Have you lost it completely? Yeah, maybe. I have to, because he doesn't know how to whistle. <laughs> You'll get lost here. I'll go. You secure the passage to the gate for us. Just wait for me there. I'll be waiting. I'm a nice guy, Samira. Leave me alone. Ligia's photograph. What's this doing here? Surveillance was underway, and with it, a precise plan was taking shape. Because why not? She would gain independence and vulnerability, freedom. Everything she dreamed of. And as for him, he'd have someone to share his home with. Someone to bring some warmth and a smile into his existence. A little life. Konechkin's interest in Ligia is not purely professional. The chief wants to separate her from her relatives and propose a marriage of convenience. I don't like it, but perhaps I could take advantage of it. Victor's file. Case of the death of the loan shark, witness testimonies, list of material evidence, autopsy report, copies of Victor Shulsky's correspondence, reports by collaborators. How does he know about the case of the loan shark? The page with the detailed report from the autopsy on the loan shark's body sparkles with joy. Happiness hovers over the photographs of the body, flows over witness testimonies, and colours the list of physical evidence. Because Stanislav Ashulski will do anything to protect his unruly son. Anything. Papa, did I misjudge you? Or Juan Archives. List of persons suspected of a thaumaturgy. The thaumaturge from Pavizla. Witness testimonies, investigation reports, list of most likely suspects. So that's, um... Uh, Ariel Rofa, right? Madame Samira, aka Sarah, identity and skills confirmed. Stanislav Sulski, witness testimonies, denunciations, identity and skills confirmed. And Isaac Sofar, a denunciations, material evidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Konechkin connects information on all thaumaturges. He would like to see us all do his bidding. Understandably. The lion's den. Konechkin uses every shed of knowledge to shred of knowledge to subjugate thaumaturges. In father's case, it wasn't his own misdeeds, but mine. Only the threat of his son's arrest prompted Stanislav Sulski to cooperate with the Ofrana. I had no idea. Oh, Papa, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't say that while my dad's in the house, though. <laughs> it seems weird. But no, he, oh, he was actually protecting us all this time. Which I feel like it's a fairly predictable twist, if I'm totally honest, but that's neither here nor there. Oh, hey. 
All right, boys. I'm gonna have a stretch, bear with me. Oh, 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 oh. I just want to check something. We got any floor? Where is it? Fright increases heart by one. Ah, that's not bad. That's pretty sweet, actually. I guess there's three more that do the same thing. Because it's going to be very hard to level these up and get even higher. You know what I mean? It looks like we can go up to nine, maybe. Oh, wait, I don't think it does. Oh, no, it does. It does. Yeah, so we can go up to seven on all of them, probably. So I guess we don't go heart next, no matter what. If I ever level up again, anyway. <clears throat> okay. Don't care about restoring health. It's this one I need to break first, really. Arana, my beloved. And I'll throw this on you. It's getting hyped. Okay, he marked me. This is very rude. There's something about that ice blow effect. It seems very low quality, really. It's, it's very um, lo-fi, you know? Uh, let's get the... Yeah, let's break the heal. Get some health back. I wonder. I've wondered. Let me see if my wonderment leads anywhere when this attack goes in. I can't tell yet. Bear with me. <laughs> Okay. Well, that hit like a truck. These guys are tough. <laughs> I mean, they're nearly dead, so it's fine. What I was wondering is if I heal with one of these guys, does it give... You know I get that debuff sometimes, wherein um, I can't heal as much damage anymore. What I'm wondering is, does that only apply to when Victor heals himself, or does it apply to when my Salutor heals? Because I'm not convinced. Like, does this give me the debuff when I heal? Yeah, it did. Okay, never mind. <laughs> never mind. It's good to know. I had to make sure. I'm oh, so close to leveling up. So very close. I'm getting out of here. I hope, I hope Samir is okay. Scott, where are we? I mean, it would be silly. Not to look around <laughs> a little bit, you know? There's nothing here. But it was still silly not to try. I'm the tail. I can't believe we're never going to do that quest. <laughs> oh, hello, boys. Hey, you. What are you doing here? Oh, what are you doing here? Breaking out. Exploring. <laughs> sure. It's a long time since I was in Warsaw last. I wanted to explore a little. Show your pass, or you're under arrest. I wish you luck. <laughs> and you, what are you grinning at? Grab the rest of those fuckers in the barracks. Oh, for the enforcement fight. Looks like it. What's this one again? No, that one I really don't care about. Alright, let's start. Um, Narana, my beloved. Yeah. We need to have a little bit of um, health preservation, I suppose. If we're going to uh, have a reinforcement fight. Oh yeah, healed for two health, baby. Stop marking me. Marana's going to keep doing her thing with this guy, hopefully. Yep, perfect. And that's going to break him as well, and I'll just keep throwing these over. I think that's three and four and everyone's very messed up. He's about to be interrupted, this guy. He's about to die, so... Yep, over it. Is he gonna die before he hits me? Probably not. Nope, he's gonna shoot me, then he's gonna fall over and die. <laughs> Fantastic. Down you go. Thanks, buddy. Now, I kinda wanna save Agony. Right? Hmm. Yeah, we want to save Agony, so we're going to keep that. We're not going to use that. I may as well concuss and get adrenaline then. Bonk. Bonk. 
Although I don't think Agony saves. I think if you mix up your attack, it resets your thing. I guess we'll find out now. Yeah, it does. I thought so. Okay, you've all got reduced damage. You've got nothing. So, my... Okay. No, tomorrow doesn't work on any of these, so I'll just start with you. There we go. Rack up some wounds. Some lovely decrepit wounds. Nom, 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 nom. It's just like he's trying to get his, his boys pumped, you know? <laughs> get hype, lads. Get hype. I can be over there. Uh, we can interrupt someone with Samara here, I think. Yeah. Shall we ignore... Interrupt you? Or the guy with the gun, maybe? Sure. Oh, no. I feel so sick. I think you only get the heal debuff if you heal... Like a decent amount as well. Doesn't work if you don't heal like a lot of damage, you know. Torment. Does torment interrupt? Is that what I keep doing? <laughs> I've not really been paying attention, but I oh, they're all dead. Okay. <clears throat> Pew. I think it's a little cheap that she doesn't do the attack if you kill her target. Like, sh surely it should jump to the next available target, no? I don't know. Hey, guys. So, have you mastered whistling? He has not. That's how you do it. I have to be quiet. Come on, folks. I can't do the finger whistle. <laughs> I can't do that at all. <laughs> Which is how you do a proper whistle. Two fingers Wanda, in. I'm so glad to see you. But not my wheelhouse, unfortunately. What about Mihal? He's dead, Wanda. They're all dead. And her? Thanks to me, the rest got out. Move. So no, he didn't get Knyshkin. <clears throat> there he is. You're a bad man. Please come in. No one should be alone at a time like this. Oh. Emir, they killed Miha. He is not altogether lost, remember. I'm going to see Burke. The rest should know. Come on, Yannick. The famous Madame Samira has honored my humble abode. Thank you for taking us in. You must be exhausted. Please go ahead to your rooms upstairs. I'll join you in a moment. Are you coming? I'll be there in a moment. Seems like a lovely guy, doesn't he? <clears throat> Just need to uh, have a little explore first, of course. Patient charts, list of services. Mr. C. R. Otitus, I refuse payment. I refuse payment. <laughs> Mrs. H. O. with a sick child, pneumonia, I refuse payment. Gash wound, two rubles for the dressing. Miss A. W. suspected gynecological disease, instructed her to go to Anna for a consultation. They've been anonymized. Berna Bernakovich's concern for patients extends beyond medical treatments. It appears he also often refuses money for the help. He's a good egg. Pistol bullets. They look like they removed from someone's body. The vessel contains the words of a Thanksgiving prayer. Its intention is to send grace to Dr. Emir Bernakovich, who helps everyone, even revolutionaries, even if they've been shot. He brings relief and asks no questions like a true angel. 
Benakovich is a doctor by calling who sincerely cares about his patients. He pays no attention to their social class or background. If he can relieve their suffering, he will. This is not a common attitude. <coughs> Bloody Nora. Oh, we got a little bit more information. Hey, look, it's like a little gaggle of pharmaturges. There's three pharmaturges hanging out together. We just need uh, Ariel Rofe, but he's never going to talk to me again. <laughs> he hates me. Oh, we've already read this one. Oh, I leveled. Full of dried herbs as well as homemade ointments and concoctions. The home medicine chest. Acerbic forts hang between bundles of herbs. When something works, it works. Who cares if it comes from folk medicine or a fancy lab? Halfwits could also be could also benefit from reading Gavid Chenna and including hygiene and exercise in their treatment. It is wild how much benefit people would get from just you know working out and stuff like that. But it's tough. Believe me, I get that. <laughs> I get that with spades on. It'd be nice if I could just like jump to the one I haven't read before. Is this about Bernakovich? Yeah. Emir Bernakovich, a physician and a thaumat. Oh no. I'll find you again, Bernakovich. I'm on my way, buddy. Here he is. Physician and a thaumaturge. Proved to be as elusive as he is interesting. I'd hoped to retrieve the grimoire and instead got a proposal to form a coterie of thaumaturges and continue my father's legacy. I knew that Omiya helps people with revolutionary views. It seems his medical treatment does not end there. The Folge helps everyone, regardless of political views or wallet size. He seems to be very good at it. Hard not to respect him for that. <clears throat> Folge's practice. The smell of herbs and alcohol. Lie scrubbed boards and the quiet size of the sick. It's not boards, it's boards. <laughs> this clinic doesn't resemble a hospital, but in some strange way it seems friendly and more homely. It looks like a place where you can actually hope for help. And apparently this help is received here. Bernakovich resorts to every method to help his patients and in doing so does not look at the size of their wallets or professed views. He helps everyone, always. So this place is so rare. Alright, we're going to put a point in our thaumaturgy. Um, I'm not really going to use any of these anyway, am I? Stick it in there. We're not levelling these ones up because they don't upgrade. Whoa! 17 heal though. <laughs> Increases inflicted damage by 30 and interrupts. Increases damage by 100%. Stun potential. Stun for 5 turns. That's crazy. We're never going to get it. So we've got to focus on these ones though because these increase our um, you see our deed and our heart are both 6 now. <clears throat> I'm hoping that the one I get next from a floor, if we do manage to find another, is not a deed. Or word or whatever it is. Scientific brochure. Inheriting the talent for thaumaturgy. When it comes to the thaumaturgists passing their skills onto their heirs, little research has been done. In this work, I shall present my own hypotheses. However, the issue requires further study. For many years, it has been believed that the talent for thaumaturgy is tied strictly to either the male or the female line of a given family. However, deviations from this were far too frequent to be turned mere errors of nature. The works of Gregor Mendel may shed a bit of light on this issue, particularly his theory about dominant and recessive genes, which I refer to in Chapter 4. Take some music on. Collect all gramophone records. Go me. Chamel. After the burial, the deceased is visited by two angels, Munkara and Nakira. If they were a good and devout person, God will inspire them to answer the angels' questions correctly. However, if they were not devout, they will become frightened and lose their ability to speak upon seeing the angel. Here are the questions that will be asked after death and the answers that should be given. <coughs> okay, what would my answers be? Who is your lord? I serve no lord. My lord is the almighty god Allah. What is your religion? I don't have religion. My religion is Islam. What's the name of your prophet? I don't have a prophet. The name of my prophet is Muhammad. What's the name of your book? The name of my book is the Holy Quran. My, the name of my book is Jurassic Park. <laughs> what is your Qibla? My Qibla is the stately al Kaaba. I don't know what that means. From whom do you hail? I hail from Adam. I hail from Debbie and Fergie. And what peoples are your brothers in faith? The peoples of Abraham. Truly, I'm a Muslim. Alamdu illah. My people are nerds. Beautiful edition of a book with Muslim nerds and people who lift. So my two are my two groups of people. <laughs> Letters. What can I tell you, my dear? Human acrimony knows no bounds. Oh, and football fans. But one must believe in one's cause and doggedly take one step after another, however small and pathetic it may seem. Or at least, that's what I've been telling myself so far. After years of fighting, not so much against disease and poverty, but against prejudice and malice. I feel quite drained of strength, and I'm seriously considering the prospect of abandoning my work. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, 
The 1,000 needles stuck into my supposedly tough skin have left festering scars. <laughs> First, the difficulties and refusals when I wanted to start a practice in Warsaw after completing my studies in Zurich. Then, the rejected candidacy for the Warsaw Medical Society, despite having a recommendation from Professor Hoyer, of all people. My God. After that, there were the problems in Petersburg, miraculously inter interrupted by coincidence, thanks to which I became a doctor in the Sultan's Harem. And finally, a cornucopia of unpleasant insinuations, which I was treated to by both the press and my fellow doctors. They say you should look for your inner strength, because it is that strength that is needed most in times of darkness. However, I am sympathetic to you and your dilemmas. Do not hesitate to come talk to me, my door is always open. Best regards, Anna Tomasadrich Dabraska. Senator is Anna, the first woman doctor to open a practice in Warsaw. She seems to have a lot of respect for Bernakovich. In the letter, she calls him a Fazje. A Fabergé egg. Chess. I came at chess interrupted halfway through. The army standing on the board are composed of figures and arguments. The bishop of deep conviction beats the rook. The black pawns prepare an aristic. Aristic. That's a new word for me. We shall Google it. New words are exciting. Aristic. Characterized by date, debate, or argument. <clears throat> Interesting. That is genuinely a new word to me. In philosophy and rhetoric. Aristic refers to an argument that aims to successfully dispute another's argument rather than searching for the truth. Huh, ah, cool. Um, the White Knights get ready for a counterattack. So they remain locked in battle in eternal suspense, frozen in a, in, a, in a discussion interrupted by death. Sorry, I'm recording both these episodes back to back, and my mouth cannot work for two hours at a time. I can do an hour, I can't do two. I'm single. Emir's house. Emir's a doctor and a Tatar Falje who combines traditional medicine with scientific achievements. <clears throat> okay, I think that's how Frank. Please, make yourselves at home. The tea is brewing and it will do us all good. A thaumaturge party. Madame, I presume you're a thaumaturge. Salam alaikum. Hopefully. For the time being, I'll assume we all have good intentions. As for me, you have nothing to worry about, sir. Oh, I do like her. Can I run away with him? <laughs> Show him you trust Samira, of course. I trust her. That's enough for me. Let's not waste time. Do not mistake this somber moment for one of peace. This isn't the calm before the storm. We're in the eye of the storm. Time is scarce, the risk is great, and the consequences will be irreversible. I trust you've got the Black Grimoire already? Yeah. I got my father's Grimoire back. It was where we both expected it to be. Have you studied it yet? Tried. Oh, I'm assuming that just says I wasn't able to. Yeah, I wasn't, I didn't try. And this is, I did try. I've browsed through it. My father somehow managed to conceal the meaning behind written words. I can feel that it's there, but it keeps slipping away. I think the combination of our powers might solve your problem. Can you tell me what we're talking about exactly? Before he died, Stanislaw Shulski created a hypothesis upon which he tried to use the full potential of Thaumaturge's mental bond. You mean peeking inside each other's heads? It is not arcane knowledge. Shulsky believed that connected thaumaturges could share their powers. It's still just a hypothesis. How can we verify it? Only through an experiment, I presume. Let's not waste any more time. What else do we need to form such a pact? First of all, a fourth member. I trust you know someone else we could use. Uh, the only one that comes to mind is Ariel Rofer. He crossed my mind too. Do you think he could be useful with the reputation he has? He hasn't shown up at the Rougiets much lately. Do you know him well? Not personally. People talk about him in the neighborhood. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Don't give it too much thought. Needless trouble. Do you know where I could find him, if not at the bazaar? 
I know he used to live somewhere in the heart of Mirov. Maybe there. The bizarre Thaumaturge. I'll bring him here. At least I'll try. There's one more thing. That Folje who healed you. After what happened at the church in Praga, I won't have anything to do with him anymore. But he's been in your head. We don't know what kind of knowledge he might have gained there. How do you think I should resolve this situation? It would be most imprudent to let such suspicious people inside your mind for too long. Any carelessness may cost all of us dearly. If you're still bound to him somehow, I'm afraid you'll have to end it. Yes. Tell him it's not him, it's you, and so on. Remember, this is no longer a question of only your noggin. Madame, the tea is ready. I have to go down now. Good luck, Victor. Cheers, buddy. There is no way, Rofe, Apocrypha written in blood. There is no world in which he hangs out. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> it's just not going to happen at all. Did you come to check on me? Would that be wrong? Your resistance, girlfriend, won't mind. It's a rhetorical question. A little bit of jealousy there, maybe. Who is Sara Rivkin? Envy. You saw my files at Konyechkin's. Sara Rivkin is none of your business. Okay. I think you owe me one. As far as I remember, you were the one who put me in the hands of Yochrana. And then I got you out of them, alive. Do you want the long story or the short one? Long. I've got time. No, we don't. <laughs> Quiet. So, a Jewish orphan, Sara Rivkin, was born in the Austro-Hungarian partition. When the street decides to end her, fortune sends her help in the form of a popular psychic, Madame Samira. Samira adopts Sarah as her daughter, and they become inseparable. Heart-wrenching. Shut up. <laughs> Madame Samira can see more than others. She's the one who made Sarah realize her thaumaturgist nature. But Madame also has enemies who can reach her in the safety of her house. Sara knows she has to disappear if she wants to stay alive. So you took her identity. I guess it wasn't too hard for a thaumaturge to act as a psychic. Indeed. So many times I um, <clears throat> click something thinking it sounds like a nice thing to say and then I'm a little confused why it's prideful and then Victor just acts like a total dick. <laughs> Thank you opening up to me. Look out. I might start to like you. Were you close with madame? Wouldn't you be close with someone who raised you? Ah, that's Believe a loaded me. question. It's not so obvious to me. Exactly. It was madame who taught me how to live, not the streets. She was unique. By adopting her name, I believe I saved her in a way. This is the least I can do to repay her. It's a little bit like Mad Men. I'm not going to say any more than that for people who haven't seen Mad Men, even though it's very old, but you should watch Mad Men. Mad Men's great. Why did you decide to come here? With Madame's money, you could be anywhere. Anywhere is neither worse nor better than here. But the gaze of Samira's assassins won't reach here. Skywon's shackles do, however. How did you meet him? You'll know when you deserve to. Alright, got down. Let me change the subject. Finally. How long can you pity yourself? What actually convinced you to run away with me? A woman without secrets becomes vulnerable. You're armed to the teeth. Remember that. What are your impressions after meeting our host? Do you trust no one, or are you just being polite? I just wanted to know your opinion. If what we are planning here is going to work, you'll have to trust us at some point. 
I'm not sure if he's a good felcher, but he seems to be an experienced thaumaturge. And it's not easy for me, but I think I would trust him. Not that I have any choice. I'll come back later. Sure. See you, buddy. Right then, off we go. Now, did we gain... Okay, well, we've got two things to do then. We've got to find Rofe, we've got to get rid of uh, Rasputin. <clears throat> and it's at this point people will say to me, well, you shouldn't have taken the golem. But I'll tell you what, folks. I have no goddamn complaints. <laughs> oh, martial law in Warsaw. Warsaw Courier, pressing news. There are peasant riots in the Mio... Piotr... No. Permission was granted for the construction of a new Catholic church in Minsk. Preacher Rasputin, known for his St. Petersburg controversies, arrived in Warsaw. But just this clever strike, management of Warsaw Gas Works has introduced, where it deems possible, the free rental of the gas cooker Tsar and other two-part gas cookers. Post oh, no. Um, dangerous fat was urged on the loose. Anyone with knowledge of the individual is urged to report to the nearest police station or law enforcement officer. No reward offered. Civic duty. What if I go this way? Sneak around. Eh? Yeah? Big brain? Maybe. Did you manage to solve your healer's case? I'm on my way. I'm working on it. I see. Tell me how a Jew, a Tata, and my father met. Who first? Choose. Tell me about my father. I met Stanislav during the January uprising. He was still a bachelor then. We were in the same unit under Traugut. Were there many Thaumaturges fighting back then? We didn't flash it around. Besides, we all bleed red. I used to be a frequent visitor to your house. But as time went by, less and less so. Did something happen? Just life. Stanislav focused on his family, and I focused on my practice. What about Sofer? The old rabbi was introduced to me by Stanislav. He was the one who sought to acquaint us with one another. Sofer was a powerful Kabbalist and very respected in his community. He was the one who brought the golem into existence. I didn't get a chance to know him better, as he died shortly after casting that curse. Do you think that summoning the golem might have been the cause? No, no, it was the profusion of cookies he loved so much that killed him. You treated Sofer. I found a prescription he wrote. That's true. A hopeless case of an addiction to trivialities. Had we met sooner, he might still be alive. Tell me about Horowitz's case. How did it impact the Coterie? He was actually the reason it started to fall apart. He was a socialist chemist who knew a lot. There was a risk he would be exposed. So my father killed him. Stanislav took the burden of that decision upon himself, reckoning with consequences. He knew the Jewish community would blame him, and Sofer couldn't defy the will of his people. That would compromise him and be the undoing of us all. Stanislav did us a favor. And to socialists as well, I guess. Psst, 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 psst. I have some other questions. You do? I do. Tell me about yourself. I'm afraid your request is too broad. Ask me a more direct question. I'm gonna just, I wanna keep that in mind because people say, tell me about yourself and it's the most annoying question. Like, what are you asking about? Hobbies, personality, wants, kinks? Like, what is it you're actually asking about? It really annoys me. Do you come from here? You're asking if I was born in Warsaw? I only came here after the uprising. My family comes from Vilnius. But my heart beats the same as yours. Tell me more about the Tatars. My ancestors settled around Vilnius over 600 years ago. Since they were noblemen, we kept our own religion and traditions. Are you all Muslims? 
Are you all Catholics? Everyone lives by their heart. And that's the way it should be. Who do you consider yourself to be? A doctor. I meant, who do you feel like? A Tatar, a Pole, a servant of Allah. I am all of them. I like to believe that I'm a good man, too. I avoid labeling people, Victor. It leads nowhere. When we first met, you tested me. I had to know what kind of clay you're made of. Forgive the pun. You impressed me back then. You proved to be the son of your mighty father. And what did you think of me back then, if I may ask? He seemed like a good guy to me. I must say you impressed me. Especially considering the fact you look rather... Old? Experience comes with age. Remember that. Remember also that kindness and gentleness have nothing to do with weakness. And that they cost nothing. He's a nice guy, isn't he? I have some other questions. Do I? Go ahead. <laughs> I do not. <clears throat> I have to go now. May Allah guide you. Right. See you later, buddy. Now, look, the game's telling me to go the other way, but I think I'm being clever. However, I've realized I'm not being clever. I just wanted to avoid the combat. Oh, how the hell did I get out? Ah. You didn't see anything. Vache document. Pardon? Pardon? <laughs> en what français? Don't you understand? Documents. Je m'appelle Claude. <laughs> I'm innocent. I'm innocent. Officer, you've got the wrong man. I haven't done anything. Anyone with a book is a suspect. Documents. I won't say it again. Innocente. Read the voice to yourself. I'll take over. Got an eye patch. Documents. Or are you deaf? Show them to me and you can be on your way. Why so nervous, officer? If it's papers you want to see, I'll show you. I've nothing to hide. Mm hmm. He's a magician, Captain. What, am I blind? I can see he's a magician. But he's not the one. Show Harsho. You can go. Just watch yourself. Who are they? Wait, what? I learned from Lazarev that Rasputin is waiting for me in Povisla near the brothel. Did I? Who are they looking for? Who is the Tsar's army actually looking for on the streets? They're not gonna tell me. Not you. A terrorist and a fugitive from the Citadel. Go now. But that is me. I've got my eye on you. <laughs> Stryelso, reinforcements are needed on Bzetska. Let's go. Yes, sir. This game's so weird sometimes. Like, how am I not how am I not just the person they're looking for? And how do I know about how did I find out about Fingy, about Rasputin? No idea. Rasputin, by some miracle, has convinced one of the SARS officers to join his cause. He knows what he's doing. Better have people like Lazarev as friends than enemies. Such a man will be useful to the cause. I ran into Lazarev just leaving the Folges. I don't believe in such coincidences. Was he following me? In any case, he told me where I can find- Apparently- Okay, so he slipped me a note, is what the game is suggesting. I guess. God, look. A lot of the city's locked out. <coughs> Okay, let's go talk to Rasputin. This is interesting. Very interesting. It's about to kick off a little bit, maybe. He need, he need, he, he can have a chance to explain himself. Everyone gets a chance to explain their actions. You know, that's only fair. It's the right thing to do. To the brothel! <laughs> the perfect place. For moral cleansing. Polish Gazette. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not. Yesterday's service at St. Mary Magdalene Orthodox Church features an exorcism ritual performed on a young boy whose soul had been taken over by an evil spirit. 
capital letters, the spirit was expelled, but to the surprise of the believers, not by the priest, but by a monk, a certain G. Rasputin, Gregory, right, who put himself between Father Kirill and the possessed child. The monk, using methods known only to him, freed the child from the fetters of the evil one while insulting the clergyman and accusing him of incompetence. Also, I have a slight problem with this. So, Rasputin wants me to go with him to the Tsar, surely, because if not, how is he going to cure... What if What if the kid, what if the Tsar's kid that Rasputin wants to cure is also a thaumaturge, or he has a flaw, or something that Rasputin himself can't get rid of? You know what I mean? The hearts of the gathered people lit up like wildfire, and verbally and bodily altercations ensued. Our brave servicemen stepped in and restored order, arresting the troublemakers. What did Rasputin want to achieve? Was the riot part of his plan? Did he sincerely care about the welfare of the child, or perhaps the boy was not possessed at all? The truth remains unknown. That is more astute than I expected. Journalist notes. Grigory Rasputin. He's tall, well-built, has a penetrating gaze and an intense smell. The smell of faith or zeal or something like that. What's going on? R. Supper for all, poor, rich equality, overthrowing hierarchies. No, he emphasizes what he wants to preserve order. What is the goal? The good of Russia, Poland, everyone. He talks about visions, visions of doom, fires, windstorms. He can fix everything. Faith is the answer. Must have faith. Cult? Question mark? Journalist notebook. Excitement pours out of the pages as if from an overflowing vessel, and ink smells of an accelerated heart rate beat. As thoughts were hastily committed to paper, sipping every word from Rasputin's mouth, this will be front page material. Daily Courier. Who is Rasputin? A true miracle worker, or perhaps a charlatan? Nowadays, everyone is asking themselves this question as they observe the recent deeds of Grigory Yefimovich. He was born in Pokrovsk in an unknown year of the Lord. At the age of 19, he tied the knot and begat four children. Then he experienced an epiphany and began to devote himself more and more to God's service. It is said he lived as a hermit, wandering from village to village, curing people of all kinds of ailments. After years of wandering, he became known as the monk who reaches people's hearts. He went to St. Petersburg, where his chasteness and sincerity of faith were not well received. More and more rumours were repeated about him, saying what a great hypocrite he allegedly was. He was supposed to passionately indulge in debauchery rather than prayer. In the end, he was chased out of St. Petersburg, and all traces of him disappeared. Until now. Time will tell what the mystic is planning to get out of his stay in Warsaw. But explore we must before we chat to him. Because who knows what will be relevant in a moment. Bottle of wine from Rasputin. Words clung to the wine, pouring from the mouth in a whisper like liquor from a bottle. Drink from it, all of you. May there be enough drink for all the apostles. He's doing like a Jesus Last Supper kind of thing. Oh no. Oh no. Mine six. Oh no. I should have waited. I shouldn't have spent that skill point until I found something I couldn't do, you know? But I was worried it'd be in conversation, then we'd be able to level up. Anyway, so here we go. You made it, my friend. Wonderful. About what happened in the church. Did you get what you'd hoped for? Yes. Although bloodshed was not part of my plan. But apparently, such was God's will. But I'm sure that the news of that boy's miraculous recovery has reached the right ears. Time will tell, of course. Hmm. Why didn't you help me when they locked me up in the Citadel? God is my witness. Did I not send Lazarev to find you? Did they ask you anything during your captivity? I didn't give them the opportunity to ask questions. It's good that you're here. That God guided you to me again. What's the occasion? Do you want to thank me for something again? Not today. Today, all of you gathered at this table are equally important. I want to celebrate you with this humble supper. I hope you'll join us. Tell me more about this occasion. What do you want to know? Oh god. There's gonna be a lot of talking today, folks. The corner near the brothel. It was cozier at the Nadazhinsky's. But today, we wouldn't all fit. Look around and see how many believers we've gained. <laughs> that person in the background is having Are a whale of a time. Are you saying they were attracted by the miracle at the church? 
Of course. And the brothel is as good a place as any other. Better, even. Here, lust trumps propriety and nakedness is a symbol of truth. We're celebrating truth here today. Truth in community. You went to a lot of trouble to prepare this supper. To what purpose? I wanted to meet, to talk, to show my gratitude to those of you who have persevered on the path of truth. And stand with me, despite adversity. Bless you. Who can I expect to see at this supper? It's difficult to mention everyone. My flock keeps growing, but people are different. Strong, wise, weak, dumb. Some stumble and never get back up. They will be missed today. I pray for their souls. What's important is that you came back. That will do. So, will you join us now? Did you invite the press? My sermon must have made quite an impression on her. Good. Grigori, we have to talk. That sounded serious. And one should sit down before discussing serious matters. Perhaps during supper. Uh, will you join me? Doesn't seem like I'm going to get out of having this supper, does it? All right, I'll stay. And what do you plan to do after supper? God created a world and placed a beautiful garden within it in the east. Then, he placed a man there. The plan is for us to meet in paradise as well, because there we will get that which we deserve, my friend. No more, no less. Do you recall our conversation over your father's grave, when I asked who you feel you are? Yes, I replied that I am defined by thaumaturgy. And I promised you all of the Empire's thaumaturgic knowledge. And it will be so. So help me God. I am not drinking the wine. Feel like he's going to try to kill us all. Can we talk now? Your serious matter, of course. I was approached by certain people. They want my help in reviving one of my father's concepts. I understand. I know how much thaumaturgy means to you. What is it that you expect from me? Should I be afraid of something? This is goodbye for us, Grigori. We've had our moments, but now... Is it me? Sorry to interrupt mid-conversation. Doesn't Victor look a little bit... You know when you, you catch a salutor and he looks really messed up? He's got a little bit of that going on, like the redness and the wetness around the eyes and stuff like that. <clears throat> I want to go my own way. We have different visions for the future. I will work on accomplishing mine with other thaumaturges. Thank you for your honesty. I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. Wait a minute, my friend. I will be with you shortly. I still want to show you something before you leave for good. Hmm. Maybe he's okay. Hey, Victor, I am telling you now before it happens, so that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. He says he's not running a cult, but everything he says makes me think he's running a cult. Don't drink the wine, Victor. Don't drink the vodka, Victor. I told you not to drink the vodka, Victor. <laughs> water! People, give me water! Is he dead? It's okay. Hey, Uncle. Is is Rasputin gonna do a rise from the dead, Jesus kind of thing? Is that the idea here? I suspect that's the idea. Is this what death is like? An infinite void? Where, where am I? Is this hell? Well, I could have seen it coming. Oh, I have to do that first. I'm telling mom, all you temperaturges are crazy. 
<laughs> no one click here. And the teacher said, Victor, is the right here in the classroom with us right now? <laughs> I almost pissed myself. Cozy. Slow down. You'll get your clothes all dirty. I'm the head of this family, and I deserve respect. Hmm. Hmm. The dad is kind of the head by default back in the olden times. So you res deserve respect for being male? Not really. You'll put me in an early grave. That's the hope. Hey, dad. This is the end. You've lost. Doesn't sound like something I would do. Did you not hear what I said? This is the end. Leave me alone. Be careful. Regularly fed pride is a powerful tool, but it may prove troublesome during the trial. What trial? Is this some sort of court? Barbarit. Yes. A trial over the conscience of Viktor Shulsky. Of what do I stand accused? And what weighs on your conscience? Oh, come on, man. Heart 7. The game doesn't give you enough experience to make this a viable option. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Your twin sister. Despite not having your power, she was only ever kind to you in this cruel world. She was genuinely happy to have you come back to her. She was alone here, you know. Hmm. That's very noble. But is there room for a caring sister in your plans for the future? I don't think so. Soon you will be left alone again, and in time, no one will remember you. Thanks, Dad. Oh, come on, man! Ah! <laughs> it's so frustrating. Do you mean to say that you don't care? Supposedly, we only live as long as someone remembers us. After that, all traces of us disappear. Go on. It's gonna do it again, isn't it? It's gonna do all. Oh, we can do that one at least. It's interesting because you think about that. Like people always um, like. There's a song I really like, uh, and the line is just, "I just want to sell out my funeral." You know, that's all he wants. He just wants to, and, and to an extent, it makes sense because if you sell out your funeral, that's like a thing you want in life. Weirdly enough, is to sell out your funeral because just in, a, in an abstract way, in that it means an abstract way, in that it means you were loved. You had many friends, many family, lots of people came to your funeral, right? That makes sense. However, at the moment you become dead, you don't care <laughs> if you sell out your funeral. Like, I like the idea of having a lasting memory and making an impact on the world and all this, because I'm an egotistical, maniacal son of a bitch. But the fact is, when I do actually die, that will all cease to be irrelevant. So it only brings you comfort up until the moment of your death. Like, if you just get hit by a bus, then you're fine, basically. Enough. Starting now with doing things my way. Release me. You're in charge here, remember? If you wish to skip the trial, it will be so. Are you ready to hear the verdict? Stand tall in your pride, your father will not judge you. Enough. You have no right to judge me. Not after what kind of father and husband you were. Enough, I say. This is not my end. Look how skillfully you wield this mighty pride. You have turned it into a real weapon. Take it and begin one of the paths ahead of you. 
There you will find out how your story ends. This is the only way you can atone for your transgressions. Are you talking about Rasputin and the Coterie? There may be other paths available. Which one do you prefer? What do you want to tell me? That you can reach the world following paths less trodden. Does it surprise you? After all, you can play against the rules. But now, focus on what's in front of you. So... I don't want to bow to anyone. If I was going to be one of them, it would be the Coterie. Why the Coterie? Because you never managed it, I'll show you that I can. So, you accept everything that was meant for you, and you will use it as you see fit. The Black Grimoire. Are you happy with events taking this course? Yes, I want this. So, remember what it is you're feeling now, when the time for the trial comes. And you, what would you do in my place? I died beneath that tenement house. What you see is an embodiment of your pride, conscious or doubts. Those are the things you're arguing with. Don't. <laughs> you are your own worst enemy. Go now. Let's meet in paradise, the garden near the fountain. Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. I have an idea who the author is, but I don't know how it's possible. I have no idea where to look for this paradise and garden. I don't remember how I ended up here. Is it possible that what happened near the brother was just a dream? You're right. A dream wouldn't hurt like this. See some of the dreams I have. I'll think about this later. Note left on the bedside table. Talks about suggesting I find a. It's about me in paradise suggesting I found a fountain. Rasputin, is that you? Almost certainly is. Right. <clears throat> well. Wellity, wellity, wellity. We shall save it there. And uh, next video, we'll. We'll talk to Ligio and then go find Rasputin, find out what the heck is going on. We're definitely in the end game. I've got to imagine it's one or two videos to go. We're in that kind of phase of the game, right? But um, I don't know, maybe there's tons of side quests in Act 3. It doesn't feel like that's going to be the case, but you never do know. Um, I don't know how much of that you guys understood. I'm not sure I understood everything that was going on there, really. You know, that conversation with the dad in particular, the trial. Well, it wasn't. It was the trial, but then he said to prepare for the trial later on. I think he means when I actually die and I'm like at the gates of heaven and the angels have to judge me and they ask me questions and stuff like that. Maybe. I don't really know, folks. To be honest with you, trying to keep it all above water. Doing okay. Doing okay. We'll figure out what happens next time. Thank you for joining me. Cheers, myself as always. Bye bye.